Hey, what's up? I'm the Zim. This is the Zim video. This is my ride share nugget videos I like to make. Talking about a concept, an idea, a conversation, commentary on being a ride share driver in the industry at large. I've been a driver since February 2nd, 2017. And I've been driving full time. I've done over like 12,000 rides, almost like 12,500 rides to date as of recording this video. Um, so today I just wanted to talk a little bit about wages. I put in the title wages. This idea of wages. Recently there was um, a strike, a uh, rideshare strike, May 8th, which, you know, a big part of it, a big part of the reason that people are doing it is because they don't feel like they're getting compensated well enough by the companies. And I feel the same way about it. Now that I've been doing it for two plus years, I feel the same way. I had a passenger in my car recently today actually said she was watching the news and reading articles or something and said that the net we make after you know the net our net that means after taxes and expenses and stuff um we make like 17 dollars an hour that's the average i guess i would love to see the information on that that does not feel accurate to me it feels much lower than that to me um and you know i this concept, this idea, like I'm willing to share like any reputable source, any reputable news source, New York Times, you know, Time Magazine, I don't know, whatever, some reputable news source wants a case study of like what a full-time driver makes and how their expenses are and all that stuff. I'd be happy to show them my tax documents because at the end of the year, after all my adjusted gross income is account. Uh, calculated I make nothing I make nothing and um for doing this job full-time and so then the argument is you know who's the job for designed for who's it um, you know don't do it then let's talk about the who is it designed for is it designed just to be an entry-level part-time kind of whatever job if that's the case what's required for the job is more than an entry-level person would have access to you you were required to have a functioning car that works the companies definitely like it when it's newer car an entry-level employee is usually doing a job to afford their first new their first car you don't already have a car so that's one thing about it the fact that we're independent contractors means that we have to be paid enough to pay for all the things that we're not getting by working for another company like benefits and different things like that we have to pay that for ourselves we have to pay our own taxes so the rate at which we get paid should be higher so there's lots of reasons the rate at which we should we get paid should be a lot higher it shouldn't be thought of as a complete entry-level job and then also you know we have to we're required to be up somewhat upstanding citizens like we have to go through a background check to make sure our driving record and our criminal like we're not criminals we can't do this if we're, we have to so there has to be things in place that say you are at such a place in life that you are deemed worthy of doing this job so that means you should get paid a little bit more because you've gone through the motions you've you've experienced some degree of life of working of different things so that then now it's time to you want to do ride share great you know do you have your own car yes i do great that kind of thing and then the other argument is, well, it's not supposed to be a full-time job. So then maybe some of you were just thinking, well, you can do the rental program and things like that. If it's not supposed to be a full-time job, then the company should not be allowed to not only not offer a rental program because that there's no way to make the rental programs cost-effective and sustainable unless you're devoting massive amounts of time to it more than a full-time, what would be considered a normal you know, Western society full-time job. It requires a lot of dedication, a lot of time to do it, and plus you're not really making that much off of it because of the pay rates. So there's that aspect of it. it they should not be allowed to offer rental programs if this is not a full-time job. And all bonuses, all quest rides, all bonus incentives should be limited to like 10 rides a week because if you're offering 123 ride quest bonuses or bonuses that and 145 ride bonuses, how is that supposed to be accomplished within a part-time attitude around the job? If the companies really want this to just be a part-time, you know, entry-level type of thing, 
then there, there's a disconnect. It's it's not it's not connected to what the reality of the job is. So the reality is right now, as drivers, we're not getting paid compensated well enough for what we're putting into this work. Regardless if you're full time or part time, I have a really strong objection to the idea of you know just because somebody's working part time doesn't mean they shouldn't be afforded the same you know you know attitude around the the thought of getting paid um a good compensation for their part time work you know they should still get paid part timers should still get paid better than they are full timers definitely get should get paid better the, just across the board rates need to be better and i don't know how to accomplish that but then the last piece of this is yes of course i'm a little bit um, hot about this idea. I'm a little bit frustrated about the idea. I am in a position where I am no longer going to be driving full time. Very shortly, I will be drive not driving full time anymore. I'm going to grad school in the fall of 2019, and I do not see myself at once I'm in grad school. I do not see myself ever becoming a full time driver again because I know the situation. But you know, who knows? Maybe I'll need it. You know, maybe now that I know how to do it, maybe I'll need it somewhere down the line because life happens. Life is crazy. Life is weird. Life is unpredictable. Now that I know how to do it, I just hope that by the time, maybe if I have to do it and for any future people that found this job and it make, works for them, that they are compensated adequately for their efforts. Anyways, that's my thought on it right now. So thanks for watching. Love your comments. Leave your comments, please. I, I love your comments. Did you check out my unboxing of my do uh, my um, Sketchbox um, video I made? I'm trying to get away from some rideshare videos and definitely want to do more other videos. And I'd love your support by watching those videos as well. And please subscribe. I still like 70% of the people that view my videos are not subscribed, so please subscribe to my channel. I'd love it. This is getting long now, so check out my full show. It's called My Rideshare Experience. I do 20 to 30 minutes of talking about how much I made, um, questions from you on based on comments and things that you put on these videos, and then something else that came up in the week of my actual experience driving and doing the job. So again, please subscribe and be excellent to each other. Hope your rides are long because long rides are where the money is at. Hope you're, you get good tips because tips are what makes the job sustainable. And be excellent to each other. Peace.